Hey, and welcome to Haynes & Co. Again, you have the Admiral here and we've got Alejandro. Alejandro right. is from uh, Patron and we're going to talk to you about our next break-even bottle. Now remember, for Haynes & Co. this month, this is our month of agave. So we've got Sotols, Rasias, Mezcal, and of course, tequila. Now, uh, Patron is kind of one of the kings of tequila, certainly in recent years. And we've got a very special bottling to go through. But before we go through that, I thought we might speak to Alejandro and, and, and just get a little bit of information about tequila for those, that some of you, it, it seems like that elusive spirit that you might have only drunk late at night in shots. I suggest that's not the way you drink it. Uh, there are much better ways to do it. And they're, they're such a beautiful product. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, tequila does have this a uh, bit of stigma around it where, you know, people say that this one time at this party when they were a teenager, they had this, you know, cheap bottle of tequila and it made them sick for several days. Well, there's a big difference between sort of that cheap product and something like, you know, Patron, especially this bottle right here. It's, uh, it all comes down to sort of how it's made. And mm. one, of the, one of the rules around tequila is that to be called tequila, it only actually needs to be 51% agave. So it only mm -hmm. needs to be made from a... Uh, 51% of agave sugars and the rest can be made up of pretty much anything like normally it's corn like you know corn or sugar cane yeah um, so but yeah it sort of obviously makes a big difference when you're getting something that's 100% agave because it doesn't have that sort of mixture of things in it and mm. you're getting like 100% of pure product did that come from a period of time where they had some sort of um, a virus on the agave plants it wasn't actually that no that came around because of um, it actually it's actually mainly because of prohibition in America, right? So, you know, the Americans, they couldn't, you know, produce or consume their own spirits. What mm -hmm. they were doing was importing from, importing different spirits from around the world. Right. You know, brandies and whiskeys and whatnot. But of course, you know, they're right next door to Mexico. So mm. how easy is it just to get some, you know, smuggle in some tequila from across the border? It's really it's right, right next door. So, right. And then, so the demand for tequila at that period of time, it skyrocketed and therefore creating agave shortages. So then they allow them to mix it with some other sort of cane, yeah. cane spirit or corn, as you said. Yeah, exactly. So that's when the rules kind of changed. Like it changed from being 100% agave spirit down to, so I think it was originally 70, they checked the first change. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after it kept, uh, the demand kept going up and up and up, they changed it down to 51%. All because of like, you know, the distilleries struggling to keep up the demand because of the agave shortages because they couldn't, didn't have enough. My understanding is we're going through kind of that period again with the uh, huge renaissance in tequila mm -hmm. over the last probably 10, 15 years, 20 years maybe with the States. Yeah. And we're still, we're, we're struggling to keep up. Yeah, it does kind of keep coming and going. I think one of the main reasons for it is because agave takes so long to actually mature. Mm -hmm. So for the, for the blue over agave, which is what the species we use to make tequila, it takes between six and 12 years to fully mature. So and that can only be the Weber Blue Agave? Absolutely, yeah. only purely the Blue Weber Agave. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the rule, it has to be made from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and obviously eight, you know, six, six, to, six to 10, six to 12 years to, to yeah. grow yeah. an agave. And is it due to poor management on the part of the growers that they, they, they can't see that far ahead to be able to go, okay, it's, it's going to be hugely popular, let's, let's plant a whole lot more because it takes some time. It's unlike grapes or wheat, so like mm. suddenly, oh, look, let's plant some more because we, we've got a lot more production we need to keep up with. Yeah, it's really hard to sort of foresee the future and foresee what the market's going to be like in like, you know, mm. say seven years. So, and sometimes there's actually too much agave because, you know, someone one year, someone will sell off all the agave and make a killing and their mm. next door neighbor, the farmer will be like, oh, he's doing well, maybe I'll plant some agave. But then but by the time that seven years rolls around, like the markets, you know, there's no need for it. And mm. all of a sudden they've got all this wasted agave, so. Do you, do you think it'd be good for tequila to go back to being, I mean, obviously it, it's difficult in terms of production, but to go all back to 100% agave? I think it's, to be honest, I think it's still gonna be difficult because the, the tequila industry keeps booming and booming and booming. Mm. It's very, I think it's gonna be difficult for distilleries to keep up. Mm. And I think a lot of them will probably, you know, not be cool with the fact that they can only make it from 100% agave. Yeah. So I think we should sort of relish the fact that we have 100% agave tequila now and that it's, that it's and that's the one you, that's the one you should drink. 100% agave tequila, yes. that has really the very essence of 
the agave spirit, what it's supposed to be about. It's not mixed with anything else. That other stuff is the stuff that you might have been ill on and give you headaches and all that sort of stuff. That if if you but you know, in speaking with someone like Phil Bailey, he says if mm. you if you're going to go out and drink tequila, drink it all night. Tequila or mezcal or any agave, but stick with just that. Don't move to different yeah. products. You'll have a great night. Supposedly, I heard from a very young lad, and I've tried this out a few times, is that uh, tequila is a stimulant, or agave spirits are a stimulant, other, other, unlike all other alcohols, which are depressants. Yes, uh, there is a bit of a myth behind it. I'm not sure the truth about it. I mean, it makes me feel pretty good, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm all about it, but yeah, I can't say yes or no to how, how much truth is in that, mm-hmm. but I can say, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy the feeling I get after a bit of tequila. Yeah, I do too. Now, Patron, uh, this is an age old, old tequila. This is not a super old company, but tell us about the Patron company and where, uh, sure. where that so, stems from. Uh, Patron was actually born in 1989. It was born at a time when your mixer tequilas, which are these tequilas that are Know, below 100% agave, you know, 50% mm-hmm. minimum, mm-hmm. Um, when these mixed tequilas were dominating the market. Mm. So the Americans, that's all they knew, that's all they'd ever really tried. Um, so like one of the guys who started the company, he basically went to Mexico one day and discovered an 100% agave tequila and was like, this stuff is incredible. Like, why have I never seen this? Why can't I get this? Mm. So basically his solution was to, you know, team up with a friend of his and they created Pachon. You know, they did some research, they actually made it sort of discovered um one of the one of the best distilleries in mexico that were making tequila at the time like and they asked them to help them create you know the best what they were what they wanted to do was create the best tequila in the world mm-hmm. um so because and that's and that's when sort of Patron was introduced to the market and americans discovered 100 percent agave tequila mm-hmm. they've never really seen anything like it before so it kind of exploded like you know throughout the 90s and you know Patron helped to really open the eyes, open the eyes of the world to what tequila could be, which was, you know, a really premium luxury product. Mm. Fantastic. So they've, when they've done, they've done really well. They've, uh, they're a huge business now. Now they've got, you've got a range of Patrons in the family of products you guys put out. Yeah. Classically, tequila comes in like a silver or plata a reposado and a mm-hmm. Nyeho. Now, reposado literally means rested from what I understand and Nyeho yeah. means aged. Yeah. Um, and you guys have others outside of that as well? Yes, yeah, we do have a, quite a large range of tequilas. Like the, the Grand Patron range is basically our sort of, you know, high-end luxury range. The one, the kind of spirits that you sit next to your high-end cognacs mm-hmm. and, you know, really old whiskies and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, um, yeah, so like Piaggio we have here. Is, uh, so it's an, actually an extra in the so extra age. So the rule of that is, you know, three years or more is when you call, start, you call it extra in the mm-hmm. So this one is aged for over three years. Great. Uh, in French oak barrels, and it's purely Tahona crushed. So Tahona is uh, an ancient volcanic stone, stone rock, um, basically made into a wheel that crushes the agave super slowly mm-hmm. for over two hours. Uh, it's a yeah, very ancient method. And it yep. creates a very sort of um, rich and full, fully flavoured tequila. Is it so? This is aged in French oak. Is it also aged in American oak or just French oak? I believe it's just French oak. Okay, terrific. Well, I reckon we should uh, crack it, have a little Let's taste. Do it. What are we? What are we looking for in this product? <clears throat> when we're tasting tequila, what are we? What are we looking for? Well, this one's different, of course, because it's always aged in different barrels and it's aged for quite an extended period of time. So, this you're going to find a lot of sort of just rich, sort of dry fruit flavors you're getting from the French oak barrels. As well as, there still is, of course, there's some of the agave essence in there. Probably a little bit of pepper. Mm-hmm. Actually, looks it looks fantastic. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, it's a great bowl, quite different from the original bowl. It's all kind of hand bowl and glass. And yeah, so the whole Grand Patron range is actually made, all made in crystal. Right. Yeah, my favorite thing about this bottle is actually the lid. So the lid is actually, you can see there, there's actually some of the, the volcanic stone from the Tahona wheel. Yeah, it's fantastic. I know it's on the outside of the box as well. Yes, it's on the box as well. So it kind of, you kind of experience what the, like, what the Tahona wheel is. Well, it still has that wonderful note of what tequila smells like to me. Yeah. That's sort of upfront and... 
like immediately I'm just getting like heaps of dried fruit. Mm. But you get that kind of earthy, slightly grassy hay kind of notes, which is you know the classics for smell mm. of tequila for me. It does have that dry, beautiful dried fruit. There's a little bit of honey there as well, and a dried apricot. Heaps of spice, even like kind of you know baking spices. Mm. The cinnamon, ginger. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that is good. That is that is exceptional. You gotta love that. Yeah, you even get a little bit of the sort of like a tannic thing coming from the the oak barrels. Mm. Kind of dries the side of your mouth a little bit. So these are uh, these are obviously reef. They, they, they had something else in them before. Do we know what was in them prior to the uh, Patron going in the barrels? French oak. I imagine it would have been cognac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where you're nice. getting a lot of that sort of dried stone fruit. Mm. You do get the notes of that sort of cognac hidden in there. Mm. That's really good, delicious. So, uh, being our month of agave, we have this on our bar at uh, a break-even price. You'll have to check out the socials for what that is, but I believe it's super affordable. If you ever want to try a beautiful tequila, this is your opportunity to come in and give it a go. Um, like I said, we, it, with break even, one of the way it works is we just break it down from what we, we pay, divide it by the number of shots on the bottle and we put it up there for you. So we don't make cent out of you. So it's a, a great chance for you guys to be able to try something exceptional. So uh, Alejandro, thanks very much. Great Pleasure. to have you in. Thanks very much, thanks for having me. Good luck with everything and we'll see you guys soon. Cheers.